Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Can you welcome somebody once more this morning in the house of the Lord? Name above all name, you are worthy to be praised, and my heart will sing how great is our God. I just want to ask the ashes, um, just do me a favor, as long as there's space around here, if you can feel also here. Sometimes I can't see because of the poles which we have here. Are you with me? I can't see brothers and sisters over. I have to move around. I don't mind, but it will help. Amen. Who is blessed this morning in the house of God? Hallelujah. I, sir, God bless you for hearing and acting. You know, in the first service, we said hearing for God means you hear something and you act upon it so god bless you 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 hallelujah can we lift up our voices to heaven and say father here i am in your house to receive a word from you let your grace be upon me and flow lord from your throne upon my life my family my children wives husband everyone that is connected to me everyone even that is looking for a job let him receive just because of this prayer everyone that is being sick lord let him be healed just because of this prayer because you say in your word if the people by whom on whom it's called by my name come and humble themselves i will heal them lord almighty we have more than the wall of solomon we have Christ. Hear our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You might be seated. We thank the Lord. Same song. We thank the Lord for his goodness. We thank the Lord for his love and for his mercy. Hallelujah. And I would like to tell somebody you are blessed. Can you tell your neighbor, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Blessed. You are blessed. Hallelujah. And you must tell yourself day and night that you are blessed until your mind understands that you are blessed until your mind start flowing and functioning out of blessedness hallelujah you know there are things you cannot do because you are a male hallelujah because you are a male your gender is male there are things you cannot do are you with me there are also things you cannot do because your gender is female do you agree with me so there are things that you can do because you are a male do you agree with me there is a way of dressing, a way of talking, or that goes with your gender, right? There are also things that you can do because you are a female. Do you agree with me? Now, same applies that there are things that you can do because you are blessed. Are you with me? So when your minds comprehend, understand, and is conscious that you are blessed, it makes you acting a certain way. Am I speaking to somebody? It means you have interiorized who you are, the blessedness of God upon you. Amen. You begin to understand that a blessed person cannot say this, cannot do this. But a blessed person does this and that and that. You give because you are blessed, even when you have nothing, but you give because the blessing pushes you to give. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody? In psychology, when a child, you know, the, uh, uh, there is a difference between sexuality and genitality. Hallelujah. Sexuality has to do with uh, behavior. But genitality has to do with the gender. Okay? It's a bit Chinese. 
I'll try to break it down. When somebody goes into sexuality, it means he or she start behaving according to the desire which is in him or her and lead to sexuality. You understand? Now, uh, the way you dress has to do with your sexuality. Amen. That's why we, 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 these people, we call them what? Gender what? Those who are who like repressing women. Um, gender. Okay, it will come. Now, when you talk about genitality, it's about to be aware of the genitals. You understand? Now, a child around two, four, five begin first to this around before two years begin to discover his genitality. You understand? He begin to discover that this is boy, this is girl in terms of genitality. When he grows a little bit, he starts discovering the sexuality. You see, she starts playing now like a girl. He starts not playing like a boy. Before that age, there was no difference. You could give any toy, the child will just play. But now that she's growing a little bit now, she chooses. She goes on to the Barbie side. She goes on to the pink side. This go one goes into X-Men side, into what well, he discovers. And since he discovers, he grows with it forever. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Are you getting it? And from that moment, he or she has discovered the sex she is in. She behaves it the rest of her life. So when you begin to understand the blessing, it might be a bit hard. But as you grow and you grow a little bit more and you have discovered your blessedness. As somebody has discovered his gender, you start behaving according to your gender or you start behaving according to your blessing. Now, it means your gender saturates your mind you think like a man you think like a woman you understand so if you can grasp a blessing that way it will affect your mind it will affect your choices it will affect your standards are you with me we had a small meeting my friend and i yesterday whether taking medication is sin or no sin i told them guys to be honest with you it's not a sin to take medication but it's walking in a low standard hallelujah some were a bit offended at start but as we sat down we talk and talk and then we open bibles and books and all these things we came to a conclusion taking a medication is not a sin for you but it's not the standard of god it means when I take medication, it my I don't have faith at that time. I'm weak. We must admit it. I'm not saying don't take medication, go and die. Are you with me? I'm saying if you cannot win a battle, it's okay. Until you're ready to go for the next battle and win the war. Is the message clear? Is the message clear? The idea is to walk in the standard of God. If I can walk in the standard of God, it means the life of God in me has really impacted me. It has impacted my mind, it has impacted my soul, it has impacted my body, and I experience it. That where everything I touch has a touch of God. You understand? Because it's no longer a natural or a normal person who touches. It's a man who, look, one of the symptoms that there have been fire in a certain room. You see the smoke, you see everything is burnt. When fire has been somewhere, there must be, you know, traceability. When the Holy Spirit has been at work in somebody, we see it. When you have understood the blessing and the blessedness, it's tangible. The way you talk, the way you behave, we see it. You know, there are people, they have challenge to give because they think what they have is the last. Hallelujah. 
God has blessed me to be around people who are able to give even when it's their last day. They give. Sometimes I wonder, now, does he have something I don't see or know? I can see all his accounts are empty, but he still gives. Hallelujah. May God places you close to some people. You will learn what is giving. One of them is my friend, Pastor Nagano. Hallelujah. He's a giver. And he will never lack in his house. Learn. God blesses you to put you close to such. You will learn a lot. When you understand that you are blessed, you think, you speak, you act like a blessed person. Hallelujah. When I talk about blessing, blessing is not about what you have, what you don't have. Blessing is not based on your challenge, based on your circumstances. You can be sick, you bless. You can be in trouble, you still bless. You can be having nothing in your pocket, you still bless. You can be in a mess, you still bless. Because blessing is not based on what you have. Blessing is who you are in Christ Jesus. The word says that blessed be God, Father of our Lord Christ Jesus, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies so in jesus we are blessed whether you have you don't have you still blessed and the reason why you don't have it because you don't understand that you are blessed you don't understand that the will of god is to bless you you don't understand that behind your blessing god has a purpose you want to reach something you want to reach people hallelujah when apostle paul is saying I, 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 I hope i will find the scripture it can be in Romans 15 13 or 13 15 you know these are scriptures you see once in a while uh and then you have to look for it um maybe 13 15 god help me no it's not 13 15 anyway um in other words uh, otherwise Apostle Paul is, is promising to visit the Romans. And what he tells them is that when I have come to see you, I will enjoy to be in your presence. Okay? And when I will be leaving to continue my trip, I am hoping, I am expecting, I am counting on you to support my trip. I was jokingly calling my friend uh, Pastor Ndagano or Pastor Makanda and said, Oh, Apostle Paul is asking for, for, for things. That's how it is. So he said, I'll come, I'll be with you. But before I leave, I'm expecting you guys to, to, to support all my needs for the trip that I'm, I'm going. I'm going to preach in this place, but the, the fair fees, the eating on the way, the accommodation every time... All this thing I'm expecting it from you. Where will they find it if they don't have it? Hallelujah. You see, God is concerned also about you having provision. If he wasn't concerned, he would have just said to Adam, Okay, have dominion. Whether you eat or not, I don't care. He said, No, I need to give you food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody lift a voice and say, God gave me food yes hallelujah when you are blessed blessing is regardless of what you are facing i want you to understand i want you to be able to look at yourself no matter what you are going through to keep saying that i'm blessed there's no food in the house i'm blessed hallelujah i'm in the hospital i'm blessed and i'm anointed i'm in the this i'm still blessed my bank account is empty i'm just blessed if you can think that way, you will defeat already the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty will not convince you anymore that you are poor. And when you begin to think along this line, you begin to speak along this line, your life will take the direction of your saying. Hallelujah. When you begin to think that way, your mind begins to function in a different way. Your mind begin try to will try to to bring outside what is inside now if inside the mindset is blessing outside the blessing will come hallelujah and your actions will be based on the spirit at work in you am i speaking to somebody 
when we speak about being blessed it is conferring unto one abilities when god blessed them god conferred unto them ability he said uh, the the bible says god blessed them and he said be fruitful multiply subdue the earth he conferred he empowered them to succeed he empowered them to do something he gave them power and after you know giving them power now he says be fruitful multiply and this it is it, it, it's almost like the word jesus says in the book of luke chapter 4 verse 18 he says the spirit of the lord is upon me then he say because he has appointed me or anointed me to preach to heal to proclaim you see there was a purpose why the spirit was upon him he first says i have received the spirit of god upon me not in me upon me hallelujah and then he began to give his job description so god blessed them and then he gave the job description when you are blessed god confers to you power when you are blessed god transfers to you divine capacity for you to do something when you are blessed it's not about money it's not about a car it's not about a house it's not about a marriage it's not no it's about the abilities in you that can produce house that can produce marriage that can produce money that can produce so if you understand blessing in that way even when you don't have it you say i can produce it 1985 unless i mistake or 1983 i still have to check again if my memory is good bishop david oyedepo goes into the u.s and he buys book for 9600 us dollar who can buy books for 9600 us that madness how much nine thousand so that's close to one fifty thousand rand. Just imagine a library in your house of one fifty thousand rand of books. When he got home, his wife, uh, Pastor Faith, very excited, darling, you beg, yes, I'm beg. What did you bring? He said, Oh, I brought wonderful things. She was happy, expecting, you know, things from the U.S. He opens their books. Wow! What else did you bring? Come, come, you'll see again. He opened this one. Books. Wow! So nothing nothing else he said yeah there's there's other things again he opens there books 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 and 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 books but he said couldn't you buy this couldn't you bring this he said to her in all these books there's all that i need to produce what you are asking me for just give me time to read them all to process them all and you will see so he did hallelujah when i was in nigeria he was giving us um we had um a, a workshop beside the main services so we were in a room we were in the university chapel four to five thousand sitting place but it was only pastors so i was there in front there and he was telling us forbes estimated his wealth to 150 million and he said i can't be that poor hallelujah you see he went through what it takes to produce blessing is like that it's in you you can produce it's not about what you see it's what is in you that can come out if you can see because i told you last time when god blesses you he package your blessing is send it to you as a seed it comes as a seed it comes as a seed offering it comes as an idea it comes as a project it comes as a prayer it comes as a declaration it comes as a scripture he packages it because that how he send it from heaven into you but when it reaches you now you open it you begin to unfold it it becomes what god intended in your life blessing is a mindset you must think like a blessed person you will act like a blessed person you will speak like a blessed person no matter where you are no matter what you need no matter your need your situation when you blessed it's about what is in you so do not allow what is outside to influence what is in but allow the blessing in to affect and to impact what is out of you you have been in 
impacted by God so that you may impact also what is out of you. So see blessing has a new mindset. Hallelujah. The blessing of God are irrevocable. He cannot be taken away. The blessing of God are permanent. Whether I sleep, I'm awake, I'm playing, I'm swimming, I'm crying, the blessing is there. It doesn't go. Because as long as I am in Christ, I am blessed of all spiritual blessing. Can we now open our Bibles and read the word of God? The word of God says, I would like to read in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. The Lord speaks unto his people, the people of Israel. And he says, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Can you tell your neighbor for me? If you be willing. If you be obedient. You are qualified to eat the fruit of the land. You might be seated. Hallelujah. This other translation says that if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best that the land produces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who want the best? Who want the best? You see, God has the best for you. And God wants you to have the best. And he blesses you for the best. Hallelujah. It doesn't say for good and bad. It says for best. Praise God. And the Lord is speaking to the people of Israel. And he actually rebukes them in Isaiah chapter 1. He is rebuking them because Israel has stopped serving God has stopped worshiping God has stopped um, how can I say obeying the precepts and the principles of God they have just stopped hallelujah and he began to rebuke them he began to tell them you see you have not listened you have not obeyed you have not this and because of that that is why you are going through what you are going but i'm willing to restore you i'm willing to bring you back to restore whatever you have lost and he says only if you are willing and if you are obedient then you shall eat the fruit of the lands am i speaking to somebody now when you read in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, Moses pronounces the blessing upon Israel. Hallelujah. He tells them what they must do for them to maintain what they receive from God. Hallelujah. Now, have you heard about the mountain of Gehazim? Have you heard about that mountain? Gehazim. Uh, I'm not talking about the servant of Elisha, but a mountain. In John chapter 4, Jesus meets the Samaritan. Do you know? Did you know that the Samaritan were the cousin of the Jews? Did you know? They are cousins. They have the same blood. I don't know why they hated each other. The woman said to Jesus, You guys say that you must worship at Zion. Our ancestors said we must worship in this mountain. That was the mountain of Gehazim. Or Gehazim. Right? And Jesus said, It's not on this mountain, not on that other mountain, but true worshippers shall worship in spirit and in truth. What happened actually? Moses gave to Joshua the instruction, When you reach that place, Gehazim, you will pronounce the blessings of God upon Israel before you enter the promised land. So when Israel, as they were traveling, they reached the mountain, they stopped. 
and they started pronouncing the blessings of God which Moses instructed them they pronounced and then they had to move into the promised land some of the priests refused to move to the promised lands and for those priests they decided that Gehazim was the mountain which God has blessed they stayed behind because they were priests they started teaching the people of the land the laws of God they took wives among these people and they created the Samaritan you understand that's why they were debating whether worshipping at Zion or Gehazim because they were they knew the same God are you with me so Moses is asking them to pronounce the blessing of God because they have to have it in mind that when you are in the promised land there are things you must do to enjoy the land to continue to enjoy the land so when they got into the land they stopped doing what they were supposed to do in the land and because of that one of the prophets of God Jeremiah stand and speaks of God or speaks from God unto them and tells them God says hear O Israel listen to me O Israel hallelujah so when you read from verse 1 in chapter 1 of Isaiah the word says the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos which is so concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah Jotham Ahaz and Ezekiah king of Judah hear O heavens give ear O earth for the Lord has spoken I have nourished and brought up children and they have rebelled against me they have stopped obeying my voice they have stopped walking walking according to my statutes right hence the Lord speaks to them so from the moment they stop walking by God ways by God words the lands in which they were promised or they were blessed stop giving them what they were supposed to receive are you with me when you read in Deuteronomy 28 verse 23 God says through his servant Moses the heaven will become of brass you know brass bronze you know bronze le bronze it a, it a, it a metal right and the land will become of iron it's also another metal what is the implication of it god says when you stop walking in my statutes the sky above you will become a metal there will no more be rain what was the purpose of the rain to shower and to water what was sown and planted so it means you will be planting in your promised land but it will not grow because there will not be rain are you with me now did you see it on your screen Deuteronomy 28 verse 23 did you see it now are they in the promised land or not they are right what is the promise God gave to them concerning the promised land? A land in which flows milk and honey. A land in which I, God, shall have my eyes on it. And I will send, pour out the rain in every month. You shall no longer work hard under the curse of Egypt where you will you 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 have been pumping for water into your fields hallelujah read the scripture there's so many so many images in which god speaks to the people in egypt i forgot the name of this device when i get it i'll even get a picture for you in egypt they they were using some devices you know they had a lot of water in in egypt they had these devices i just forgot how you you call it it's near the water now um 
Okay, let's not just go to science. But it's near the water. Uh, there's another man called Archimedes. In French, we call him Archimedes. He created that thing also. You are pumping. There's something which is turning like a screw. Is getting water into the land. You, you just are, you just pumping. You just pump with your hand or you pump with your legs. And you start having big calves. Hallelujah. Like you're a cyclist or something like that. So now God was saying, you will stop working hard. Under the curse, you work hard. Hallelujah. You see, working to work was not the, the curse. Toiling, that was a curse. I'm telling you. God says he placed men in the garden to till the garden, to work the garden, to take care of the garden. So men had to work. But when he sinned, God said, now sweating, you shall sweat for you to have food. It means the ground will no longer be giving you that easily. Remember, Adam was not cursed. God cursed the ground. So for him to get something from the ground, he had to suffer. That's why you cannot suffer and work under the curse or as if you were in, the, in, in a curse. But some of us, we are working like we are cursed. While we are not. Hallelujah. Working as if really you are paying the, for the sin of Adam. Mm. And the devil has convinced you from the pulpit that men must sweat to have food no 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 that was the curse i had a preaching from a man of god to him he hit it he nailed that preaching it was mm, and he sent it to me for me to enjoy i think i still have it somewhere when i listened to him i could not he was expecting some comment from me what will i say amen i just didn't say anything because I don't believe in it. Hallelujah. The blessing of God. Proverbs 10.22. The blessing of God. What does it do? It makes rich and add no. Now, how do you want to convince me to make it in life? I must suffer. I must lose my, lose my job 10 times. Uh, I must wake up every day, sleep 3 hours a day only. I must swim 10 kilometers, walk 11 kilometers, run 2 meters until I get there. I work and then, they, and then I go back the same way. No, that is life. That is what God said. You know, man shall eat at the sweat of his forehead. Hey, I'm blessed, brother. I'm what? I'm blessed. The blessing has covered all that part. Working, I have to work. But suffering, no, is not part of the deal with God. Work, yes. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, some of us, we work as if the curse is still there. No, it has been broken. Tell your neighbor, it has been long gone. We believed it, we accepted it because we were told from the pulpit that men must sweat for him to get something now working yes sweating uh uh hallelujah jesus took it off he took it off so the lord said to them you will no longer toil as if as you were toiling in egypt you were pumping 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 your you start having big calf like that this Back in Congo, we call it Kwanga. Big one. Hallelujah. Big one like that. God said, no. When you get there, milk, honey will flow. Hallelujah. You just spit, something grows. You will no longer pump like in Egypt. Because I, God will have eyes on your field on your crops and I will send the rain in every month in every month that's why he even says I will send the former and the later rain I will send the rain hallelujah what does the former rain does the former rain comes it soften the ground from the dry season because the ground become 
dry you see like cracks on the ground it's very hard so god will he say i send first the former rain when the former rain comes the ground becomes soft you can cultivate now it gets soft and soft and soft and now you can sow and after you have sown god say i'll send the later rain you know what the later rain does it brings acceleration when the later rain comes in israel it's stronger than all the rain of the year it starts around march until may it reached the highest around may why it has to bring a, a quick growth of everything that has been sown because after may june the dry season comes again if you want to understand that scripture go read the weather in israel you will understand it hallelujah and why the lord say so that you may have enough your vitamins grow you may have enough of oil you may have uh, whatever you sow grows praise the lord so you see in the promised land they were not to be in a hardship in the promised land they are experiencing the blessings god has blessed them milk and honey flows it means everything grows easy but moses said be careful to obey and follow what god has said to you right and from verse 15 you read upward in deuteronomy 28 he said be careful if you do not do what the lord says the curse will be upon you this will be upon you this will be upon you this and one of the things now he says that if you do not do what god says heaven will be of brass it will be bronze so rain will not come if rain doesn't come the ground cannot be softened you understand <laughs> can i speak to somebody when you speak about water there's a water from above and there's water from beneath <laughs> from above you see the rain but from beneath you doesn't you don't come you don't see how it comes hallelujah pastor what are you trying to say i'm saying what i'm saying there are blessings you don't see the way it comes when god promised who is this um, judge gideon of jephthah god say go in the whole valley dig you guys are thirsty i'll give you water just dig holes you know the story you know the story it's in the bible they went digging holes digging holes empty holes and then they went to sleep god filled the, the holes with water and they drank there was no rain water from beneath some blessings they, they come in a way you don't see the way it's coming but it's coming amen as long as he was willing to obey what god said god said dig dig holes god we are in the wilderness i don't even see what the god said dig holes hey god say let us be willing and obedient they started digging Master, I said, brother, just dig. As long as it's God that said it, just be happy. Just dig. Started digging and digging and digging. They went to sleep. They woke up in the morning. No rain came. Water from beneath came. Hallelujah. Because they were obedient. We lose it a lot when we don't obey God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, they are in the promised land, but things are not working accordingly. God sent his servant and say, speak to them. They are rebellious. They disobeyed me. Look, 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 look. Tell them. Tell them. And now, tell them, I want to restore them. But only those who will be willing and those who will be obedient shall eat the fruit that the land produces. The other, this other translation say, shall eat the good or the best that the land produces. Remember, we eat all but we don't eat all the best some 30 folds some 60 folds some 100 folds according to your capacity to listen to obey to act upon the word of god hallelujah hallelujah we are all blessed in christ jesus our promised land is called christ hallelujah our promised land is called christ the hope of glory is called Christ eternal life 
to see the kingdom citizen of the kingdom of god that our promised land we are citizen we enter the promised land which is this, the kingdom of god but how is it that we are not experiencing the kingdom of god hallelujah jesus if i can call him so the first citizen of the kingdom of god or the one who came to teach us the things of the kingdom of god has walked under the provision of the kingdom of god he lacked nothing but why is it he came to show you the way give you the blessing but you're still in need you are in the promised land but you're still in need you're still sweating you're still hungering you're still in need you still you still you still something is missing hallelujah they were in the promised land but they were no longer seeing what god said honey and milk was no longer there rain every month was no longer there hallelujah but you are in the right place i'm in christ isn't it i'm in christ are you not in christ so why am i not seeing all these things something might be missing praise god and as i'm speaking about i've been talking about the activators of the blessing i wanted to talk about two of them this morning hallelujah to be willing to be obedient for you to activate your blessing you need the things that activate and activating means causing something to work it means that thing is there but it's not working hallelujah you activate your alarm it means your phone has an alarm but it never rings at 5 a.m you never activated it right so you are blessed but you need to activate you need to do what caused the blessing to be manifested in your life praise the lord and when moses spoke to them he told them so many things that they had to do in the lands for them to enjoy the land so there was a manual for the lands hallelujah the same way we have a manual for our lands our promised lands the kingdom of god which is the word of god which is the bible which is god instructions hallelujah and moses said if you do what the manual says number one if you don't you lost you doomed you cursed and when they stopped doing what they had to do the blessings of the land were deactivated hallelujah now this morning we want to activate some functions of our lives amen you speak the language of the kingdom but the language is not the only thing which is in the kingdom hallelujah hallelujah you can be a south african but if you don't know what are the policies of south africa you will not enjoy them hallelujah you will just show us your green id but you don't know anything that comes with that green id give it to somebody who is not even a citizen but he knows the policies of the country give it to him for two months when he comes back you will understand hallelujah hallelujah one day I stopped at the garage next door and uh, I usually chat with these people who works at the, the garage attending them I usually chat with them so here next door and next to Roman pizza I parked the car and this lady we are chatting I know her for like 10 years or even more when I was still living in town here next to municipality we chatting we talking and say ah you you are fine you i wish i was you i say you wish you were me what do you mean now you know you're working you're a doctor you this and that i say shame i wish i had that green id that you have i was gonna show you what you what you can do with it hallelujah first of all you can have uh how do you call this thing when they pay for you your 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 scholarity your uh a bursary you can have a bursary you can so you're not supposed to be in the garage amen i told the lady i just came with my suitcase that's all i brought in south africa amen but the blessing inside produced more than that hmm 
My friend, I used to say, just give me that green ID. I will show you how to use it. You don't know the manual of this green ID. Yes. Because you don't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. Like somebody also will tell you, give me that Bible. I will show you what you can do with that Bible. We may say, we may say, we may feel bad for that, that friend of mine, but somebody also feel bad for you and me. Amen. And say, guys, you, that, Bible, that Bible that you are having, you don't know how to use it. Give it to me, I'll show you. Just a Bible. Just a Bible. But what it brings and carries. Look, if you are frustrated, you are frustrated because you have chosen to be frustrated. And please don't make us suffering because of your frustration. We were not part of it. We didn't create it. <laughs> Blessed but frustrated. What a contradiction. Amen. Blessed but frustrated. The way they were frustrated. And God said, I will restore you. If you are just willing and obedient, you will eat. Willing and obedient to do what? What he said already through Moses. That they stopped doing and now when God is rebuking them in verse 1 he says first hear hear hallelujah hear O heaven give ear O earth for the Lord has spoken and I have nourished I have brought up children they have rebelled against me first they rebelled against God hallelujah now in verse 2 verse 3 it says the ox knoweth his owner the ass his master's crib but israel do not know my people do not consider imagine an ox a cow can recognize his master but the children of god cannot recognize god as their master first mistake and worst of them it says the ass, the donkey, the donkey, he knows his master's crib. So he knows where they put food for him. He knows where he sleeps. He knows his sources. But us today, we don't know God is our source. Hallelujah. Our parent has become our source. Our husband has become our sources, so we don't need to pray. We just need to speak to the husband. Amen. And if the husband cannot produce, we are frustrated. Pray. Hallelujah. Like my pastor used to say, you go to bed with your wife, she asks you for 100 rings. You say, I don't have it. You go to bed, you wake up at 7 in the morning, darling, 100 rand. He said, darling, I'm not a witch. We slept with you on the same bed. We woke up together. Where do you think I have gotten the 100 rand? I'm not a witch. And I'm not Jehovah Jireh. Ask God. Yes. Yes. We have made men our source. Amen. And God is saying, even animals that I have created knows their master. But you, you don't know me as your master. Even animals that I have created knows where is the crib, knows where I feed them, knows where I prepare a place for them to rest. And you still don't see me as your source. So how will you be blessed? Hallelujah. Your blessing is your fiancé. Some people, they want badly to be married just to escape something. I don't know what. Some, they want to escape family poverty. They want to be married just to escape poverty. If you can work, if you can know God, you will, you will be out of poverty without being married. Then you will marry for good reasons. Hallelujah. God is the source of everything. God is the source of our, of our business, of our ideas, of our everything. Hallelujah. If you do nothing about it, nothing will happen in your life. Amen. God says, they have alienated themselves. It means they have become estranged to me. It's like we don't know each other. 
Who is the source of your blessing? God. But you want to operate your life far away from God. Hallelujah. In verse 5, the Lord says, Their head is sick and their heart also is fainting. When your mind is full of wrong doctrine, wrong understanding, rebellion, ignorance, demonic influence, and many other things, your body and your everything will just follow. That's what God says in verse 5. You see, the, it says the head is sick and the body is, the heart and the body is fainting. So, the soul needs to be restored. The soul needs to be saved. The blessedness mindset needs to be back. And the what to do as a blessed person needs to remain there. Hallelujah. He says he doesn't take pleasure anymore. When you read from verse 11 to 13, he doesn't enjoy anymore the sacrifices, the male goat sacrifices, the cows and the fed. He said, "Mm mm-mm. Because anyway, in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23, God says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. 22 and 23. 23 says disobedience is just has the sin of witchcraft hallelujah so this is what brought the people of israel into this place not walking in the ways of god hallelujah not walking and keeping the command of god but he says he want them to be restored you want them to enjoy the blessing of the place where he, pla- he put them. Like God wants you to enjoy the blessing of where he has placed you. He has placed you in Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has placed you in Christ. And in Christ you are blessed. And you have to experience those blessings it has to be part of your life how will people say that you are blessed you know sometimes they don't take ah. you know when somebody says something that you have you want to have it even be- before you suggesting it hmm? since i just imagine that i'm making thirty-five thousand us dollar per week not rents us dollars it's big, eh? That close to what? 150, 150, 150, 450, plus 75, 500, 525 rent per week. 525,000 rent per week. Amen. And you hear about it. Won't you ask me to hook you up? You will? Will you? Will you? Will you? But people don't want Christianity Christianity because you don't show them what Christianity is. If they can see what it is through you, uh, they will demand it. You won't run after them in the street and they say, I don't have time, I don't have time. They will come to you. You see, God blesses you for advertisement also. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the word of God says, brother, in the book of Acts chapter, Acts chapter 8 verse 6, that the people, they yielded, they obeyed, and they received Christ. Why? Because they saw what Philip was doing. Signs and wonders, advertisement. Amen. A lot of our friends went into the occult when we were at university because they saw a good living in our teachers who were in occult. Amen. I was telling you about the lady I prayed for, God restore her heart during a preaching last Sunday. Remember, her father was one of the great occult in the university where I studied. We knew it all. And before he gave his life to the Lord, he recruited a lot of people because he had a good life according to them. Amen. And us, Christians, spirituality is to be funny, is to be sad, is to be poor, to be spiritual. Now, when you preach somebody, look at it and say, if it's that being a Christian, no. 
The first time in my life, I think I was 14, 15 years, 13, around there, I don't remember. Somebody came to preach to me, Christ. I was touched by the message. I wanted to give my life to Jesus. But when I looked the way that guy looked, he looked like somebody who has lost his father and his mother and his brothers that day. And he said, let me go preach. Now in my heart, I said, if I accept Jesus, I'll become like this guy. Eh, 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 no. <laughs> I refused. Not because I didn't want Jesus. Because I didn't want to look like him. Amen. I mean, I'm not saying go and become a millionaire. I'm just saying live the life God intended for you. Ah, sister, you're always happy. You this and that. Things work for you. What is that? Ah, sister, if you want to know uh, my secrets... Christ in my life is enough. Oh, what do you mean Christ? Look, this is what I used to be. This is what has to happen. This and that. But the day I received, I understood who I am. From that day, wow, can I have it? Hallelujah. Advertisement, brother. If I make 525,000 rand per week and you are told, you will come and pass out, what is your secret? What business are you in? All of you will come. All of you, all of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, when you live the blessed life in an apparent way, people will try, will try to, even if they, they're a bit um, reluctant to approach you, but when you approach them, there won't be resistance. Just imagine, you come here at the church, you see... Ah, uh, uh, Dr. T welcoming you. But by that time, Dr. T now is the number one of Department of Education. I'm telling you, all VUT will come here. Because they want bursary or they want something. They will come. She's the usher. Everyone will serve. Because you see your CEO is the usher in the church. When you go to church, you see the CEO of the biggest company. You CEO of uh, what is Metal. You see him there, ushering you, brother. And he knows you well. You are somewhere very low. He can't even greet you where he is. But because of the church, he comes in. Sir, just, just one minute. He wipes. Sir, you can see it. Ah, you want it. <laughs> you say, sir, can I help you too? You understand? You have to live the life. Spirit, soul, body. Hallelujah. And God says, I will restore my people. I will restore them. He said, if you are willing and you are obedient, that's all. That's your solution. Be willing. Be obedient. Hallelujah. Do you know, if you can only be willing and obedient to every word that God speaks, it will change your life. Hmm? Hmm? Now, when he speaks to them, he says, hear, O Israel, hear, Oh earth, heaven, what the Lord is speaking. In verse 1, he got the vision. In verse 2, before he began to say the vision that he got from God, he began to tell them, hear. Right? And the word hear in Hebrew is Shema. Some write Shema. S-H-A-M-A. Some write Shema. S-H-E-M-A. There's even a nice song that um, uh, um, who's this? Paul Wilbur. Hello Israel, hail you chosen one, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. It's Shema Israel, Adonai, Elohei Inu. I'll I'll show the song. Okay, it's a Shema Israel. It, it's Deuteronomy chapter what six four, right? So, Shema, when it says here, it means a careful hearing of someone or something and respond to it by appropriate obedience or action. I will just summarize it. The word hearing in the Bible means, in the Old Testament, means you are listening you are hearing something or someone carefully and you respond to what you heard by obedience and action right here 
means to hear intelligently with obedience. So, the way God speaks Shema here means when you heard me, you have you do what I have said. Because a hearer, hearer in the Old Testament means the one who hears and obeys. You see, when Dr. T, for instance, sent her daughter and say asanda bring me a cup of water and asanda is still on the phone okay the next thing probably she will say asanda did you hear me okay she will not say asanda do what i said she'll say did you hear me why because she is expecting the hearing of asanda to be accompanied with action my question to you and i this morning do you really hear god because hearing shema means you heard and you accompany what you heard with action corresponding action so when he says hear me earth hear me thus says the lord if you are willing and obedient it means when god is speaking he's expecting us to do what we heard how many times we come on sunday how many times we come on tuesdays and fridays how many times we read the bible how many times we watch a sermon imagine if you could hear you could hear sorry what he says god weighs it means every time you hear what he says you do you hear you do you hear, you wouldn't be where you are now amen but how many times have you heard the same sermon? So the problem is not the way probably the man of God is preaching. is the way you are hearing. It means you have a problem with hearing. It means you don't have a proper understanding of what hearing means. And as long as you don't hear, you cannot do. Hallelujah before he begin to speak to them he said i want you first to hear me shema meaning hear carefully what i'm saying and act upon it hallelujah if i can hear every word that you know the bible says faith comes by by if you really hear I don't have to push you to act on what you heard because hearing means acting based on what has been said hallelujah if i have to tell you did you hear me did you hear what i said did you hear what i told you last time it means you didn't do what i said and somehow god says hear me israel in a way is like pleading that when i say something please do it and it says letter it says if you are willing because the key here has activators is to be willing and to be obedient hallelujah now when we speak about willingness willingness or to will is to have a deep desire okay i will come tomorrow i have a desire to come tomorrow hmm. hallelujah <laughs> who is willing to prosper so then be willing to do what makes you prosperous did i say something did i ha joshua 1 8 let the the do not depart from your meditate on it day and why so that you may observe to do what is written so shall you make what 
Who will make the ways prosperous? Myself. So, if I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated by myself. Not even the devil. I'm telling you, the day that guy will be judged, you will see that so many things we said was him, it was not him. Hmm. <laughs> Is not omnipresent, first of all. You say, God, mm, my mother, I wasn't even there. Why? Because you want to accuse somebody for everything. You don't want to take responsibility. Adam, what have you done? God, you gave me this wife. It's her. You gave her to me. It's not me. Have you seen that answer? He accused God. He said, it's the wife that you gave me. So, it's the wife. It's not me. But where did I find the wife? You gave me the wife. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, take responsibility. You must be willing. Willing means a desire. An inclination that you have to do something. Hallelujah. Willing means the urge. To fill a void. You understand? The urge. You are pressed. To fill. You know. Hey man. I want to be married. Huh? I want to. Hallelujah. If I say who want to. Some will never lift up their hands. Even if they want. That's what we used to say. Amen. I want to be married now. I want to be me. Why? There was a void that we were willing to fill. You understand? So, if you are willing, willing means you have that inclination to do what God says. You have that desire. Why willing is important? Because God says you must be willing and you must be obedient. If you are obedient only with that willingness, it does not fulfill the criteria to eat the fruit of the land. God says if you are willing and if you are obedient, you shall eat. So willingness and obedience grant you access to the best that the land produces. Willingness and obedience give you permission to have the blessing of the land. It means the land did not disappear. They were still standing on the promised land. They were still there. Can you see? They didn't go into Assyria. They didn't go into China. They were still in Jerusalem. But they are not receiving what Jerusalem must give them. Why? They rebelled against God. Why? They were disobedient. Why? Maybe ignorance for some others. Why? Maybe laziness for some others. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, because of that, they are in the promised land, but they are not enjoying the promised land. Hallelujah. You may be in the marriage, but you are not enjoying the marriage because you are not doing what the marriage is supposed to you supposed to do in. Huh? You want to be married? Wait. Okay, get married. Then you get married, and now you are married. You are crying. You are envying those who are in in their own marriages. Now, as we are suffering, we are not enjoying. Yeah, but you don't know how it works. You don't do what it takes. You don't do the things of it. How will you enjoy it? There must be communication. There must be transparency. There must be all these things. There's none of them. Now, how will you eat the land of marriage if you don't understand the, 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 the keys of marriage? It's the same. Amen. You want to be financially stable. You don't even want to do what it takes to be financially. It takes working. It takes investing. It takes studying. It takes giving. It takes sowing. It takes generosity. It takes all these things. You don't want to do any of them. You just want to save your money and to become the richest man. Then you will struggle. Hallelujah. Even when you know it, you don't want to do it. Amen. They say you must sow, mm -mm. you must tithe, mm -mm. you must invest, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. but you want to be stable financially. You are qualified maybe for the worldly finance something, but not for the kingdom. Because you must do what the kingdom requires. Why? Because you have a problem acknowledging God as your owner and your master. You have a problem acknowledging God has a real honor of what you have and you being just a steward of what he has given to you.
you have problems acknowledging god being the source acknowledging that your crib is in the presence of god not in the presence of men you begin to invest in the ways of men you begin to follow the ways of men you fill your mind with the ways of men in terms of whatever you want to grow you will progress in the ways of men not in the ways of god now you cry to god but you do the things of men why you are not willing and obedient to what god tells you for eat for you to eat the fruit of the land hallelujah I pray as the word says, I will make a difference between those who serve me and those who not serve me. I pray that that difference become palpable, tangible, visible. That when they see you, they see that God has gone through you. Hallelujah. And when they have seen it, they say, I want it also. You say, this is the way to go. Hallelujah. Ha. You can be obedient but not willing. And God said, I don't just want to be that obedience as if I was forcing you. You must be willing. You must have the desire. Do you understand? Sometimes you do something because daddy said, because the boss said, because the pastor said, but you are not happy with it. You are not willing. So you won't be blessed. You will just do the thing. Okay? You will just obey you rather obey even if you don't understand but you are just joyful to do something you don't understand lord jesus me i don't understand what is happening i don't really have any clue i have a phd in fishing and i followed all the principles of the world that i study at the university of fishing and i didn't get anything now you come with principles which are anti-fishing fishing is by night now you say fishing by day by day they don't you know so anyway but i'm willing to obey you what are you saying cast it on the right side okay i'm willing i will do that because i desire to see result then he threw on the other not understanding but he was willing what did he get the fruit of the land at that very moment hallelujah how many of us obey the principles of God even when you don't understand them? Remember, I always tell you, when you buy a TV, you put it, you connect the cable, you switch it on. You don't try to understand how it works. When you are pressing on that remote, giving you TV5, giving you SABC1234, you don't try to understand how the remote works into that thing. You don't even care, but you enjoy the TV. Now you want to understand how God will work things for you? God, which is more complicated than that tv amen and the words you want to understand for you to believe it means that's not faith hallelujah if you have to understand if you have to touch and to see that's no longer faith and anything which is not out of faith i wonder if it is of god because it takes faith to see the things of god hallelujah how many of us are ready to sow not to sow after three weeks because you must be a, a sower a, not an occasional sower a consistent sower you try after three weeks and you say this thing doesn't work hallelujah you pray you pray you pray after 11 weeks nothing and you say ah it doesn't work how did you know i pray for 11 weeks good people i pray for eight months before i get my watch back hallelujah and there are still other things i still pray for maybe it's two years now i still pray for them hallelujah i still pray if you want such a problem i still pray because i believe i strongly believe it will come back hallelujah how i leave it to god but i pray do you want to understand how sowing and reaping work for you to sow? That's your problem. I'm willing to sow even if I don't understand. I'm willing to sow and obey. Do you want to know how your prayer will be answered before you pray? I, that's your problem. I'm willing just to pray. He said, if you are willing and you are obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. Are you willing to go through what it takes, brother? The Bible says, in due season, you will reap. What will you reap? Whatsoever you have sown. But look how it starts. Galatians 6, 7. 
do not deceive yourself. Do not. Whatsoever a man sow he. Now, when he says do not deceive, whatever, whatsoever you sow you reap. What it, what it says is, some people think they can sow something else and have something else. You don't live and walk by the word of God, by the principles of God. But you are hoping that God will bless you. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. You are walking by your own principles, by the world principles. You sow seeds of your own kind, of your own ways, but you think that God in his mercy, in his love, in this, he will give me another harvest. You say, ah, ah, you are deceiving yourself. So before you deceive yourself, let me tell you not to deceive yourself. Okay, let me say it. Do not deceive yourself. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. Oh, now you understand that. If I don't do things God's way, I can't have God kind of result. Oh, that's the case. So, let me do God's ways. Now, as you do God's ways, Paul continues and he says, Do not be weary by doing good. It means as you do it, you do it, you do it. And some people say, ah, this thing is not working. This thing is taking too long. Is it really working? Paul said, no, do not be tired by doing good. Continue. Con- ah, me, I'm tired. I did it for two years. It doesn't, I've been sowing and sowing. I've been praying and praying. Or I've been declaring and declaring. It's not ha-. He said, no, in due season you will reap. If you faint not. It means... If you don't get tired, if you don't quit, you will reap. I was just encouraging somebody who is doing good to keep on doing good. Hallelujah. So, yes, you must be willing. Hallelujah. And God says, not only willing, you must also be obedient. Now, guess what? The word that says hear and the word that says obedient is exactly the same word in Hebrew. Shema. Obedient means to act on what you heard. Obedient means you have heard okay, carefully with a corresponding action is the same word exactly shema not that it derives uh-uh, the same word so to be obedient means to hear and to do what you heard but it's it's same as english isn't it isn't it Jess, give me a cup of water. No, me, I'm hungry. Hey, Jess, obey. No, me, are Jess, obey. Obey what? The instruction. Isn't it? Sometimes we don't even repeat the instruction. We just say obey, 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 obey. Obey what? What you heard. To hear and to do. To hear and to obey is the same word in Hebrew, Shema. Whatever you heard, you do it. Whatever you heard, you act upon it. So God says, you must be willing and obedient to do the word. So it means every word that God speaks to you in any and every area of your life that you want to see change and develop or that you want to see the blessing be activated. What does God say in terms of ABC? God says this, okay, I heard him and I do it until I see it. Okay, what does he say again about finances? Oh, about finances, this is what he says. Oh, Lord, I heard you and I will do it. I will do it consistently until in due season without fainting, I begin to harvest. Okay, God, about health, what do you say about health? About health, this is what I say. Lord, I heard you. I believe I will obey. I'm willing and obedient to anything you say. It means anything you are willing to obey you will prosper in it Hmm? because when he speaks to them in deuteronomy 28 he gives instruction for everything so if you do the everything you have the everything 
That's why you see some people, they have more result in a specific area of their life. Why? They have managed to grasp some truth about that area and they push it to an extreme. They're prospering in that specific area. He might not be rich financially. He might not be a powerful preacher, but he have a very stable marriage. Why? He heard God concerning that thing. And he can decide not to move to finances. And then he can decide to move into ministry. Then he can decide. Then he can decide. My question to you, do you hear? I understand we read the word of God. We hear when they preach. We hear when we read. We hear when we listen to a sermon. But do you hear God hearing? Imagine if we could hear every sermon we preach every Sunday. Every meditation we read every morning. Every truth that we discover. I was telling the first service that I understood now why some of our Nigerian fellows, when you ask them, how is it? They say, uh, when they are in trouble, they'll just say, it is well, it is well. I never understood. What, what do they mean? It is, is this a Nigerian thing or what? Until I found it in the Bible. It is well. The child was dead. She said, Give me a donkey. I need to, man, to meet the man of God. And the husband said, Is there any problem? Today is not prayer. Today is not. Uh, is there any problem? She said, No, it is well. Hallelujah. How are you? I'm blessed. How can this guy? He has nothing and he said, I'm blessed. These people understood long before me that blessing and it is well is not based on what I see, it's based on God. So when I say it is well, I say what God says. See if God says it is well, then it is well. Hallelujah. How are you? I'm blessed. But you look at the guy. Sick is... No. Even sick, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Even with only two rand in my pocket, I'm still blessed. So I, I can put my chest straight and say, I'm blessed. But I have nothing. Hey, this guy is dreaming, eh? No, I'm not dreaming. I know that I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Because that is a fact that you cannot change willing and obedient to what to the word of god hallelujah and i'm closing here by saying this this is something the lord said to me yesterday the lord said to me even yourself some of the things i said you don't do because you don't have it under your eyes you're not hearing it it's spoken once in the church it's spoken once when you were reading that thing and then it's gone the lord said to me do you understand now why i said to joshua to meditate day and night every day hallelujah what you hear only once you forget and you will not do it hallelujah the lord ministered to me and he said this is why oh, and i want to ask a question who in this room have projects for your life you have projects you have plans for your life almost everyone you want, there's something you want to do now my second question is how many of us has wrote it down amen you see less now my next and last question how many of us read every day what they wrote down i see only one hand where are the others you see you cannot do what you wrote down if you don't read it every day write down the vision that they that read may read it on the run the other translations say they may read as they are running how can you run with the vision if you don't even read the vision hallelujah this year the reason why you don't do the word of God is because you don't read the word of God hallelujah is because you don't write the word of God. And if you write, you write on your phone where there's Facebook, there's, there's competition. Are you with me? On your phone. 
There's, there are stones. There are thorns. And there are birds. You see, when I open my diary, there's only the word of God. There's nothing I'll find there. Even if I'm reading a preaching for two, from 2003, it's still the word of God. But when I open my phone, uh, there's a ping like it used to be with Blackberry. Hallelujah. You know, every time you receive something, there's a ping. For those who... Did you use, never use Blackberry? Eh? Did you? Amen. On your phone, Tisha, there's Facebook. There's WhatsApp. There's Tele... 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 Telegram. There's... Eh? Twitter. And this other thing. What is... Snap, uh, what is this other thing? Instagram. And... Uh, I forgot this other one on your phone so you may read one scripture when you have a notification ta, 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 and guess from who from the friend which who you were gossiping ta, 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 seven messages say this must be important you know how they come zoop 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 say mm, you touch it as if it was accidentally but it wasn't exactly and it's rah, you start reading you have forgotten what you were reading you start responding you see, on the phone, there are thorns. There is pleasure. There is the pictures that you posted. How many people liked it and how many people shared it and how many people commented. Mm, sister, that is an, an evangelical size. There is no evangelical size. Hmm? That is evangelic. Ah! Christian, sometimes we use the gospel for the wrong thing. Mm? Mm. Man of God, that is a, a prophetic posture. There's no prophetic posture. Eh? On your phone. You don't write. When you write on the wrong place, you say, write the vision. But where? On the tablet. Places where only it can be that when you read every day you wake up you read you do you wake up you read you it re, it's a reminder who has a to-do list for every day one two three to-do list hallelujah you write down what do i do today one two three four five six when the day is over you open your to-do list I didn't do one two. Why? I got distracted by giving. He wanted us to go and play PlayStation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm? Hmm. You check here. Bongi came to fetch me just to eat Magwenya. Just like that. Next time, I'm not going. Amen. Write down the vision. The reason why we don't do, even when you are willing, the reason why you don't do, you don't write. But God said to Moses, to Joshua, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate therein day and night. Why? That you may do according to what is written. So as long as you don't read your own project, your own plan, your own design, your own, as long as you don't read, you cannot do according to what is written. So he had to meditate the word of God. Lord, for my finances, what does the word say? I must meditate day and night what God says about finances. So that I can do according. Look, if you come to church, the four first needs people will come. Number one is money, finances. Number two is family. Number three is health. Number four is job. Hallelujah. These are the four things you will see always as people prayer, prayer points. Don't ignore that. It's true. Don't pretend you are spiritual by not talking about them. It's a fact. You need money or you need family issues to be sorted or you are sick or it's job related. Besides those four, what else? Hallelujah. So let's find out what God says. Amen. Now I'm closing by saying this. If you have to be willing and obedient, it means 
your soul faculty is involved that's why you can't do without your soul if your soul is controlled by something wrong you do something wrong in your soul your will is there your choice to obey is there your emotions are there your intellect are there in your soul so the one who controls your soul controls your life if the world controls your soul the world will control your life if the word of god controls your soul then it will control and it will bless your life hallelujah that's why your soul must be free that's why the man of god james says receive with humility the engrafted word which is able to save your soul only the word of god can save your soul saturate your soul with the word of god that it's changed the functioning of your soul from the earth to the heaven perspective then you'll